The reality is is now on Patreon, and here are some of our fabulous supporters. Tracy Newman, my presence is a gift. So remember the thank you note. Lily, some people say I'm too much, but she's just starting. Marl Farsi, reading is fundamental, and in Farsi, the reads are monumental. Tracy Masters, when you're the master of your own destiny, no one can take you down. Amanda Agosti, some Amandas are text bots, but this Amanda is as real as it gets. Ade Ade Dokun, it may look like I'm stirring the pot, but actually I'm just smoking it. Paula Bretrude, if you think I'm a bitch, you're probably right, and you probably deserved it. Lola Del Rio, whatever Lola wants, Lola gets, and I get it all. Naveen Jonathan, I'll give you the shirt off my back, and also by unsolicited opinion. Jada, people are intimidated by my great success, and my great ass. Deepa Kanapoli. Some people say I have secrets, but at least they're not federal indictments. Hadil Ibrahim. Some things are too hot to handle, like me and the tea I spill. Srinidhi Subramaniam. I have four degrees, eight syllables, and zero Fs to give. Shannon Anthony. There's no fun in moderation, but there's plenty of shade. Brianna Tooney. Some people strive for perfection, but I'm already there. Rita Ryan. Don't be fooled by my Midwest charm, because I'm nobody's fool. And finally, Beth Bear. The secret to my success is staying out of your BS. Does Monday at the office feel like a storm? Not with Microsoft Copilot. That feeling when Copilot gets everyone up to speed instantly? It's sunny again. When Copilot simplifies complex data so your teams can act, that sun's shining on a beach. And when Copilot uncovers hidden insights, you're on that beach with your people and you find buried treasure. That's Microsoft Copilot. Learn more at Microsoft.com slash AI for all. I mean, two days ago, I was, ugh, I had to go down to D.C. for my passport. Mm-hmm. And it was a whole ordeal, like the whole day. And I know some of my neighbors actually travel to D.C. every day for work. It's like living in New Jersey and going into the city for work. Yeah. It's the same thing, except in New Jersey, at least you have train, public transport. Yeah. And here you have to drive into D.C. for the most part. And I don't know how people do it. I came home in physical pain and I had to also add on a Girl Scout meeting on top of it. And by the time I got done that night, I was in so much physical pain. I had to fill a whole bathtub with Epsom salt and just soak in it until I passed out. And then I was like, okay. Not in the tub. Not in the tub. (laughs) Yeah. Well, I could have. I mean. Well, so. But I got got up before I passed out in the tub. (laughs) (laughs) We told our listeners and our Patreon what's going on. Mm. Why don't we tell the main feed why you had to go to get your passport? Yeah, so I am going to disappear. I am going to (laughs) escape Noor and disappear for a while. (laughs) I'm going to be like Mary Cosby and say, no, Noor, no. I am going to go visit my mom in India and yeah, uh, I'm going because there's some medical issues there as well. So this is not going to be uh, A, a fun trip and B, a short trip because mm-hmm. I am needed there. So I'm going to be living there, working American hours, sleeping at odd times and trying to be useful to people there Yeah, that need me. I don't know how I'm going to do it because during the day they need me and during the night my work, I need to work. So I don't know. Somebody's going to suffer. It's going to be you. <laughs> <laughs> You'll be the one suffering. Yeah. So I know, are these right? going to be gone for like six, the next six, seven weeks? Oh, I know. I cannot believe that it's, that's how long I'm going. I'm like, I keep looking at my daughter and just <laughs> sobbing. I'm oh like, I've never God. left. I've ne- never left her for that long. I think the longest I've gone is four days when I went to San Francisco. Mm-hmm. And I was miserable by day two Aww. or day three. I was like really, truly miserable. And now I'm like, how am I going to go for like six weeks? She is completely okay with it. I'm the one who's losing She's going to miss you like crazy though. I think so. I feel I like think- at some point in your trip, she's going to send you a message and be like, when okay, you, you have back? to come back. Yeah, I know. For sure. 
<laughs> I hope so, at least. I know. If, if I she know. doesn't, I, I would be like, this- you know what? You know what, guys? That's fine. I'm going from yeah. here to the Maldives. And maybe after a week of dad's cooking and just dad being on her ass all the time, telling yeah. her what to do, she will start missing me. Yeah. And my kind of gentler nagging stuff. So <laughs> Yeah, your gentle nagging. My gentle nagging versus... <laughs> His, well, his orders. <laughs> I don't know what I'm going to do on the podcast without you. I'll just say that oh, much. You're going to be fine. You're going to, you know, when I come back, you might even say like, you know what? I found a match. I found a better match than you. So Stop it. Yeah. <laughs> That's not going to happen. I mean, I keep thinking about the Bravo world that is going to just keep moving on without me. Yeah. How dare they? How dare they have a Jersey, <laughs> Jersey premiere without me? <laughs> <laughs> no, there so was it, no the premiere was this week. Without me, maybe. Wait, the huh? premiere was this week. Oh, the premiere was this. Yeah, I just yeah. I just watched it. Don't yeah, I was like, that. wait a minute, did you not watch it? Because we got to talk about. It. No, 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 I did watch it. I was no, gonna be like, if you didn't the watch rest it, of Jersey, yeah, yeah. No, I, but this, I was gonna say, if you didn't watch it, I'd be like, you know, what, Arthur, just it's been a difficult up. week. Forget no. it. Forget it. Just leave right now. We're not. <laughs> <laughs> I did watch it. I did watch it, but since then I watched so much more. So I, know. I watched OC and then Miami. So I forgot it even happened. I'll remind you. <laughs> so we're going to talk today about Jersey, about OC, about Miami, and we're going to touch on Project Runway. We have so much to talk about. Ugh. So let's start with the Jersey premiere. So happy to see my Garden State gals, <laughs> our close personal yeah. friend, Jackie Goldschneider. <laughs> We didn't take. We didn't talk to her. I wish we had talked to her. I talked to her. Oh, you did. But you were talking to her during the show. She probably didn't. Yeah. What do you mean? She was probably mean? annoyed. She was probably no. Like, she wasn't. Stop she turning was very around sweet. and talking to me. No. She uh, stop it. She did not. <laughs> How dare you? <laughs> Jersey's back. Right from jump, we open into Gia is annoyed with Joe Gorga. <laughs> Gia has always had those big expressive eyes. But now when she's rolling them, like she just does this, she does like an extra big roll of her eyes. Every time she mentions Joe, I'm like amazed by how much she rolls her eyes. Yeah. You know, for having two parents that are like pretty unexpressive, right? Like both Juicy and Teresa were both like kind of deadpan, dead face until they were like screaming. Right. But- so in that regard for Gia and actually Mo, I like all the girls to be so expressive with their faces right. is very funny to me. Yeah, it is funny. Gia is 20. Just turned 21. Uh, she's an adult now. Yeah. And Melania is what, 18? Yeah, I think so. Oh my God. They have babies. I know. And now they're discussing adult stuff. Getting involved in adult stuff. Gia is going to become the next housewife. I appreciate Gia's transition into the Housewife franchise versus Kim's Brielle and um, yeah, their course. transition. Oh, my God. Of course. I think because Gia, for the most part, has been in New Jersey, right? Like, Gia mm. has stayed in New Jersey, and regardless right. of all the ups and downs with her family – like with her parents, whatever. She's stayed in that disgusting McMansion. She's grown up in North Jersey. Like I think she's gone to the, she went to the same high school, middle school, whatever. Yeah. Like she stayed where she stayed. She got to be a kid in whatever capacity. Yeah. So I think it's a different thing. Whereas those Zolciak Beermans, like they yeah. try like she had her kids in Connecticut, then they moved a bunch in yeah. Atlanta. And so because of also their dad. They went Troy. from a townhouse to a mansion and yeah, yeah. So I feel like they also also their mom is not that Teresa's mother Teresa, but like yeah. Kim Zolciak is a whole other beast. Yeah. But- I think Teresa's still a traditional mom. Yeah. She's still a traditional mom. She is. Yeah. What do you think about Gia being mad that Joe keeps dragging their dad? I, I understand why kids would be mad and yeah. protective. But also Joe and her mom have signed up to be on the show. They will talk about subjects mm-hmm. that Gia and Melania may not like. It. I'm not upset with their reaction. Mm -hmm. I'm more upset with, in that sense, Teresa should be the one telling them not to get involved in this and let their uncle be or whatever. Because Teresa doesn't stop them from dragging Joe. 
Mm-hmm. But Teresa doesn't drag Joe herself because she's not supposed to care about Joe Judice, right? Because she's yeah. divorced and all of that. So, but she's letting the girls do that anyway. And I have I a think- feeling that she's not just letting the girls, but she's encouraging the girls to do oh, it. You know, it's be. one of those situations. I, I think where- that maybe that maybe uh, Melissa's thought as well is that they are, and Joe Joe, Joe um, Gorga's thought that it's. Teresa, who is pushing that whatever Gia is saying, it's actually Teresa who feels that way. Yeah. The other big discussion is the video that came out about Louis. <sighs> can I that, just say? Uh, can I just say they jumped right into it? Can I just say what that video? I mm-hmm. will never forget when I first saw it. You want to know when? When you visited me in Jersey over the summer, you mm-hmm. were sleeping in my guest bedroom. <laughs> yes. And me, you, and Richie D. We're texting. I was in my bed. You were in my guest bedroom. And then you were like, what the fuck is this video? (laughs) The funniest thing was. I forgot that's where it happened. (laughs) The funniest thing was, you guys kept talking about a man with a dress on behind Louie. And I was like, you guys, that's a tattoo. (laughs) There's a man standing behind Louie that has like this really intricate chest tattoo. And you guys kept saying, why is that man in a dress? (laughs) Like, no, it wasn't even, why was he in a dress? It's like, why is he in a dress while other, everybody else seems to be half naked? Like, what is happening? Like, do, how, everybody else got punished by being getting half naked, but they put that other man in a dress to punish him? I didn't understand. It was very confusing. The, the video was confusing. The therapy that was, the explanation behind the video was confusing. It was just creepy. It yeah. was creepy. It was I so loved creepy. how Bravo showed all the Twitter um, <laughs> exclamation yeah, points. It's so creepy. Like, creepy. <laughs> I was like, hey, is that mine? Did I tweet that? Was <laughs> <laughs> oh, right tweet there? I also loved the how they just jumped into it right away. Yeah. Like, what were they thinking the first episode was going to be before that happened. I'm like, what was their storyline that they were going to go after? The Gia being mad at Joe Gorga storyline? That was Maybe. the... I don't know. That is what they were going to build on the first episode. And all of a sudden, this happened. I have a feeling with Jersey, they just get the cameras rolling and suss out like what the, the you know, what the temperature mm-hmm. is across yeah. the board. Like we already knew about Jen versus Marge. We already knew about yeah. like... You know, this Joe Gorga making jokes about Juicy Joe on his stupid comedy tour or whatever the hell that Ugh, was. Yeah. That's the stuff that they thought they were going to go into. But yeah, then this Louie video comes out and it's just it's just such an insane so Joe, video. Yeah. And Joe gets asked, first of all, thank you, producers, for not showing the rest of Joe's comedy tour. Yes. Thank God. I appreciate it. Thank you. you. Yeah. Um, there was a reason we, we didn't pay good money to watch it, but nobody wants to watch it. Yeah. Leave us alone. Yeah. Um, and then Joe Gorga is asked about Louis's video, and he makes a joke that he has never missed Joe Judice more. <laughs> I couldn't even tell who should be more upset, Louis <laughs> or Joe Judice. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> should Teresa be upset that he made fun of the fact that he doesn't like Joe Judice? Yeah. Or should she get upset that she prefers he prefers Joe Judice now to Louis? Yeah. <laughs> like what is should what should you be upset about? Well what's funny is <laughs> in all of this, Louis apparently was quote unquote very sensitive about it. Mm, and mm-hmm. he made a big stink and he got yeah. upset that Joe was making comments and jokes oh. and all this oh, stuff. Oh poor Louis. Oh, poor Louis. Maybe Joe should take his shirt off and apologize to Louis. <laughs> <laughs> and maybe Louis can wear a dress that time. <laughs> Um, Dolores always has so much going on and like at the same time, nothing going on. I love Dolores daughter on the bed surrounded. She was literally sitting on the bed surrounded by like 5 billion dogs or yeah, something like, like that. Dream. I know that's mine. I was like, <laughs> that's me. That's how I wake up in the morning with two big dogs <laughs> with their tails slapping away at me <laughs> because they're like <laughs> trying to get up from the bed. Dolores always runs down everything that's going on in her life like she's unloading on a cashier at ShopRite who's like not even asked, you know? (laughs) It's just very New Jersey. 
She's yeah. so New Jersey. She, I got the Reno and then David and then Gabby and then school and the kids and then Frankie and, and Big Frank and Little Frank. And she just, it, it almost feels the, like. The, the baseboard, the baseboard, the baseboard, <laughs> the, the, base, the molding, the baseboard, the molding the lighting. and the baseboard. It almost feels like she knows that there's not a lot going on in her life, but she just yeah. like overcompensates by giving us every single <laughs> detail of everything that's going on. And I'm like, you know what, Dolores, you don't even need to do this. Like, we just need you around because occasionally you pop off or you say something hilarious or whatever. But I genuinely <laughs> don't care what's going on in Dolores' personal life. I feel like she keeps renovating or changing houses and not settling down with a man so that right. she has this like string of like random life events chores like trips to home depot that she can like yeah. expand on as her storyline yeah. this is this house has taken longer to renovate than charade took to build chateau charade yeah we'll get her I joggers totally before so. her house yeah. is renovated i mean there, at least charade had a small floor mat in front of her door dolores doesn't even have a dishwasher yeah yeah. And didn't she renovate that kitchen like in her second season of being yeah. on the show? Well, she demolished it in the second season after Frankie left all the pasta on the counter. <laughs> but she never built it back up. Because oh, yeah. remember, she, she put a pause on her house and then they went and renovated David's house. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. There's always a renovation in Dolores' yeah. life. Yeah. Either she's renovating her house or she's renovating her body. Mm-hmm. <laughs> She looks so good, though. She looks so good. She's insanely fit or insanely sculpted by the Yes, docs. sculpted. <laughs> exactly. What do you think about the barbers, Tiki Barber and his wife, whose name I didn't even get? What's her name? I didn't catch it either. Kristen? Kristen? Or Kristen? Catherine? Kirsten? It started with a K. Stephanie? No, it started with a K. Okay. I think. Okay. Katie. Katie. Let's Christy. call it Katie. Christy. Maybe. We made oh, who knows. Doesn't matter. Write us in, listeners. Tiki and Kiki Barber. Let's call them Tiki. Tiki Let's call it Kiki, Kiki Barber. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So Tiki and Kiki Barber. They joined. They're supposed to be friends of of the Gorgas. And yeah. you know, it's very salacious how they got together because mm-hmm. his wife was pregnant with twins and he ended up hooking up with the younger intern. Yeah. So Kiki says that she met Tiki months. After he had left his wife Mm -hmm. and was in the process of divorce. Mm -hmm. But then in the very next sentence, she says that she was eight weeks pregnant when he left his wife. And so she was blamed for it. Yeah. Like how? I don't don't understand. Something is, some math is not mathing up right there. (laughs) They're just trying really hard. Like, honestly, once they get to Teresa's pool party, I feel like, If you look in the back, there's multiple people that are auditioning to be on the show. Right? I felt that because there were multiple people that had uh, better than normal makeup on. Mm Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Several yeah. people they were had, mic'd up. They had TV makeup on. I could tell. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. They had like very intense contour and lashes yeah. out to like the turnpike. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> to the turnpike. <laughs> okay. So Tiki Barber also in that luncheon, he, one of the things I noticed was Tiki Barber is like Terry Dubrow and maybe even Michael Darby level of thirsty. Oh, because yeah. he was like, he just jumped right in and was mm-hmm. poking Joe and asking him about his views on Louis. He's yeah. like, it's your sister. Go ahead, Joe. Tell us, Joe. I was like, Tiki, you're seriously thirsty. Which wow. is weird because he is independently famous and does right. not need the show. Right. It just was weird. I mean, they live right here. They live like, again, oh. they, they probably go to the same Trader Joe's as me. Okay. Same Costco, same Home Goods. If mm. that's something that they're interested in Shop going right. to. Shop right. They're Shop probably right more where, Kings people than I think, I think Friday night, that's where Kiki and Tiki are. <laughs> Shopping at ShopRite for Ken Ken Goods. <laughs> they go to the same lifetime fitness as everybody else in this area. So that I do know. Okay. But I just was like confused why they both felt very thirsty to yeah. be on camera. They felt yeah. almost as thirsty as Michelle Pius. I was like, you guys don't need this. Again, yeah. you are independently wealthy away from yeah. the show. And independently famous. Yes. <laughs> And yeah. infamous. <laughs> yeah, like, exactly. <laughs> exactly. You know another thing somebody didn't need? Mm-hmm. Jennifer didn't need a new nose. She did. Mm-mm. She didn't. She got a new nose and she looked more like a Cindy Who from Who Will. 
Yeah, I know. It, it sort of dipped down and then it tipped up. Oh, it's a bad – well, so on Instagram she said that mm-hmm. she had just gotten it and she was very swollen and mm-hmm. she just decided to film anyway because filming had started and mm-hmm. she couldn't do anything about it. That explains the sides of her nose, the cheeks, her her the lips. Chin. Because she got her chin done, apparently. So all of that explains it. But the shape of the nose? Yeah. Yeah, I think she got it corrected after that. Because she said, oh, the doctor that did my nose and my chin, I was happy with my nose, but I wasn't happy with the chin. And so I went and got my chin fixed again a third mm-hmm. time. So I have a feeling she went, whoever fixed her chin fixed back her nose back up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and... I don't believe that maybe that was her real nose, the one that she got a surgery on. What do you mean? I think that before she got this nose, she maybe got the one nose before this a little tweaked. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. She had said that. She had done that. Yeah. and uh, She had done her boob and her nose from um, by Aiden. Bill. Bill. I always call him Aiden. You always call him Aiden. <laughs> <I'm> like, <laughs> don't Bill. talk about my kid that way. No, I was thinking about Mariah's husband. Oh, yeah, that's true. That's the other one. I just felt so bad for her because as much as Jennifer drives me absolutely insane, she's so fucking mean and annoying. When mm-hmm. she walked into that party and everybody was like, oh, my God, look at that nose. But I was like, why are you guys all acting like you don't have a bunch of work done? Right. And like Jackie, again, our close personal friend that I talked to a couple of times during a crap and show probably interrupted her. She also got a nose job. Like, you guys all, Jackie had a brand new face from her first season on the show. So, like, I get it. It's not a great nose, but just the way that they were talking about it was just rich. It felt mean. Yeah, it felt very mean. mean. And I'm sure it hurt her because I'm sure she heard some of that. But also, watching it back must have been pretty hurtful. She did go to Turkey and got a nose done by Instagram doctor. And so a lot of people were commenting on that. But apparently Turkey has the best rhinoplastic surgeons around in the world. And apparently that's the place to go. Yeah. Turkey in the Middle East is like basically, you know, the face that Kim Kardashian has that now Mm. everybody tries to get. Mm. That was the face of every Middle Eastern film star actress singer for years before Mm -hmm. the kardashians rolled around so this face stuff is like not new and i am not i would never think like that she would go to turkey and have a bad experience because turkey has an actual like a lot of different countries they they do what is it like plastic surgery tourism Mm -hmm. yeah yeah so medical tourism yeah yeah so they do all that kind of stuff i just felt really bad for her because she looked no, I the the part about that whole story that bothered me was she said doctor from it, that I met that I found on Instagram. I know. I was like, girl. I was like, no, he was probably you know you could have said a famous doctor who's a very good surgeon there. Instead of calling him an Instagram doctor, but that you know that's very real of Jen. That is how yeah. she functions. Yeah, she probably that's how she found him. Probably she hundred percent. She was like, that is how I found him, and that is what I'm going to tell you about him. I she found this man on Instagram. furniture in China. On TikTok. Yes. And she finds her doctor on Instagram. Exactly. Now, immediately at the party, people are still talking about the Louis stuff. And Teresa shuts it down in a way that I was partially very proud of her. Mm -hmm. But also, I was like, you are actively ignoring red flags, but I'm still proud of you for not, like, throwing somebody into a pool. Yeah. You know? So it was – I wish Teresa responded like this about stuff always, which is why you felt proud. Like, okay – that's how a normal person would behave. But also on the back end of it, in your private privacy of your home, please don't ignore this red flag. Yes. Like exactly. publicly, this is how you should behave, Teresa. But privately, I hope she's not ignoring Louis red yeah. flag. But I, I, you know she is. So. 100%. Jennifer feels like the ladies are ignoring her and I agree to some degree that Jackie said and Marge said and everybody that Jennifer did this to herself because Mm -hmm. she did. She took very hard stances against these people. She started going on social media and calling people all kinds of names, all that stuff. And I 100% Jennifer does this to herself because she comes in hot. Mm -hmm. She comes in hot. She says a lot of crazy shit. And then she's like, what? I'm just saying. So I do think that she did it to herself. But then when she pulls Jackie aside and starts Mm -hmm. to cry to her, 
Yeah. I did kind of feel bad. I was I like, bad. okay. She's like, she's feeling isolated from filming. That's how, that's what she's crying about. Yes. She's feeling isolated in the group in part being part of the show. And she didn't want to feel that way. And she started crying. And, but to Jackie, because I guess Jackie is the kind that will be nice for being nice, for being polite. She would actually be nice um like marge would not marge would still be harsh about it because marge is a very to the point to your face kind of person but jackie would like pretend to be oh i'm sorry i don't want you to cry and just say the right things on camera yeah i didn't quite follow the escalation between jen and marge like i didn't understand how it got went from jennifer saying you know you guys aren't being nice to me to this is from her from the reunion in the reunion remember jennifer kept calling joe benino a plumber and she kept telling marge that she was married to a plumber and then putting her down and talking about being married to a doctor remember that yes, so that's what yes. that came from yes you're right. because okay. those instagram posts came right after the reunion yeah when she told jackie that was it jackie yeah that marge she tried to do something between Jackie and Marge. Oh, yeah. She tried to say that the rumor that Teresa brought to the birthday party about Evan was yes. actually a rumor that Marge had Marge start, spread. Yeah, Marge told her. Yes. So that's why when Marge did said something to her, both Jackie and Melissa co-signed that. Yes. And then she went against Melissa's, uh, you know, her business. And Melissa got even more pissed. So essentially, they, she went at them during off season. Yes. And come season time around, she hadn't found any other ally because Teresa, she couldn't have Teresa be the sticky one because Teresa was busy with Louis. <laughs> she tried mm -hmm. to have a few dinners with Teresa. Mm -hmm. She and Bill did. Mm -hmm. But I don't think it went anywhere in terms of friendship. Yeah, and she probably saw the video of Louis and was like, "Oh shoot, I picked the wrong person to be on <laughs> the possible. team." It's possible. It's <laughs> possible. But this yeah. bomb that Marge drops about Bill is mm -hmm. the conversation is so strange because they start to talk about Jennifer says, "My life is great. I'm really blessed. My life is good. My husband is amazing. He gives me this great life." And Marge keeps saying, "You're fake. You're fake. You're fake." So I have a feeling that where all this started is that one of the Instagram comments that Jennifer had made was that Melissa is fake and she's never shown her real life. Mm. And so I think that was something that Marge started to like talk about with Jennifer. Yeah. And Jennifer's like, "I don't know what you're talking about. I have a great life. I'm blessed." Right. And then Marge because is like, "You're fake. You're fake. You're fake. Everything right. is phony. You know what I mean? You're." Her husband fucked the office manager. And right. my favorite part of this was Jennifer's immediate response, which was, she's not an office manager. He fucked. <laughs> she's a fucking pharmaceutical rep, you fucking idiot. Get your facts straight. <laughs> it was an awesome <laughs> moment. Um, I, just... I, think, I think it also comes from, you know, you're right in that Marge is doing that to Jennifer because when Jennifer brought her dad and mom and did the whole scene all the last year's thing was on her mom and her dad mm -hmm. I know that during the reunion Melissa and Jackie they were saying that you sh they, she shouldn't have done that because she's really always bad mouthing her mother and that doesn't feel respectful and so Jennifer was like but this is what my life is I show my life that's why we signed up on this reality yeah, TV. Yeah. you guys don't show your life you guys are fake that's how she, she started yeah, yeah so Mara just like trying to make a point like she said okay this season I'm gonna prove to you that it's not us being fake it's actually her because she's hiding she's pretending she has a great marriage and she doesn't I think this new information about Jennifer is such an insight into to why Jennifer and Marge don't get along, right? Mm -hmm. Because if you think about it from Jennifer's perspective, yeah. she's a married woman who was pregnant whose husband cheated on her. Yeah. And Marge is a woman who cheated on her husband with right. somebody else. Yeah. So I think that already was like setting her up for failure, setting mm -hmm. that relationship up for failure because Jennifer was already like, I can't like anybody who would sleep mm -hmm. with somebody else's husband or cheat on their spouse. So that was like immediate. It was like it was never going to work out between them. And mm -hmm. then add on to it sort of the – we've pointed out before. There's been like a level of a microaggression that happens between Jennifer mm -hmm. and Marge that we've pointed out where Marge I do think has looked down on Jennifer. Her first season on, she really 
went on and on about the arranged marriage thing and all that stuff and mail order bride and all that shit about Jennifer's brother and his wife, which I thought was super fucked up. And then again, Jennifer also doesn't understand the perspective of Marge because last year when Marge talked about sleeping with her boss and being in this really horrible dynamic at her job, Jennifer viewed it as, oh, you slept your way to the top rather than actually Marge was a victim of abuse. She was a victim of sexual harassment at work. Right, which would be Jennifer's way of looking at Bill and his affair and saying, oh, there's the medical rep sleeping with the boss and sleeping with her client and that working her way up in her business. So Jennifer sees Marge as that kind of a woman. Yes. Who doesn't understand that in a professional setting, she shouldn't. So she blames, obviously she blames the medical rep for that affair and not so much Bill. Yep. She's still mad at the medical rep and she sees Marge as being that kind of a person. Yeah. That person in that equation. So she's, yeah, that's some deep shit, deep, deep problems and deflection on both their parts yes. because it's not her anger should be still on Bill or she should move on. She shouldn't hold on to this anger towards the other woman yeah it's like people are multifaceted there can be a million reasons why they decide to do something or why they end up in a situation like that if jennifer ever actually got to know marge she would understand more about why she ended up why she left her ex-husband or why she cheated on her ex-husband or all that stuff but i think that from jump once you already have a preconceived notion on the kind of person they are and that kind of person has hurt you personally in the past it's like that's never gonna happen that's a friendship that's never gonna exist because they will never see eye to eye about each other. Jennifer Mm -hmm. is never going to try to understand Marge and Marge is always going to look at Jennifer as a judgmental person, which by the way, they both are. They They both both are are. super judgmental. Right. But it was a great premiere. I loved it. Yeah. I loved it. I loved it. And they came in with a bang. Mm -hmm. Um, Very well done. Did Did you you see see them on um, Watch What Happens Live? And the Andy answer- asked them if, if she's going to get a prenup. And oh she God. said no. And Gia Ugh. says no. They think of prenup as a condition to a divorce. I, they don't. I, oh, my God. It drove me crazy. So yeah. if you missed it, I don't know how you did. It's like all over the internet right now. But Ter- Andy asked Teresa, are you going to get a prenup? And Gia, who is the bartender on Watch What Happens, was like, why? Why should my mom get a prenup? Do you know that my dad got her a prenup? First of all, Gia, you weren't even alive when yeah. that happened i think but i was I mean, like wait I what no i don't know no, she was you there she wasn't she wasn't there but yeah. also joe judice made his wife Teresa or fiance sign a prenup like a week before the marriage when he had nothing and when she had nothing that is a very different situation than right now where Teresa has money and louis has money and apparently louis has quote unquote, more money than Teresa, or that's what she says. Oh, that's what he said. He said to her. Yes, which is what he said to her so far. Regardless, you should get a prenup because you should protect your assets regardless Mm -hmm. of whether or not you are going to be together or not. You saw how your mom is so gullible and is so bad at bookkeeping. Why would you not, to protect yourself and your sisters, why would well, Gia should be the first person insisting that her mom get a prenup? Yes, it's so bizarre that she's I mean, all like the money is it. You don't want all the money that your mother made to disappear, Gia. That's what you're gonna get. Yeah, it's gonna end up going to Louis' sons. That's what's gonna end up happening. Good luck oh. with that, Gia. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <sighs> Why do they think of prenup as something that shows that they don't trust each other? I think that's the thing is they yeah. just believe that prenups mean that you don't trust each other. Yeah. I think ultimately that's what it, like so you know Islam we have prenups. Women have prenups. Yeah, I know. I know. Right. Explain that. Yeah. Yeah, so we have prenups in a Muslim marriage there's three requirements. Uh you need to have witnesses, you need to have uh, agreement between both people who are deciding to marry and it needs to be like a public announcement. Mm -hmm. And the third thing needs to be an exchange of wealth. That exchange of wealth is either immediate, as in some people say it's as simple as changing, exchanging rings, or it can be something that happens later on. And that exchange of wealth is strictly to protect the woman in the situation. Mm -hmm. The protection of the woman is, uh, it's called meher. Uh, yeah. And it's basically like, yeah, it's a prenup. So you agree upon a certain amount of money and you say in the case that 
this marriage doesn't work. If the wife wants a divorce, the husband has to give her this pre-agreed upon amount, either in lump sum at the end of the marriage, or he would have to prove out that over the course of their marriage, he has given her this amount of money, whether it's jewelry or the wedding ring or whatever. But basically now for us, it's more of a, it's like a gesture. It's not really even something that like most people look into right. as something serious. Yeah. So when I was getting married, the amount that my mom said was the same amount that my brother had agreed upon for his wife the year before. Uh-huh. And my in-laws were not expecting a number that large. And my for my parents, it was just like, uh, you know, it was just like a ritual. It wasn't actually yeah. real. My parents didn't actually think of it as, oh, if, you know, we're going to get my da- our daughter married to you and then in a month she's going to ask for a divorce and then you're going to have to give her that money. Yeah. Like it wasn't like that. Yeah. And I just remember because my parents had such a different view of that stipulation yeah. than my in-laws. It became a thing. They were like, Ugh. oh my God, like this is so much. And, like, what you-? and I was like, do your parents not trust me? Like what the hell? And it was like a big issue. And it was like yeah. something that drove us all right. crazy like a couple of months before our wedding. And we really looked at it. Both Bahad and I looked at it like, I'm not going to leave you. So it's like not a big deal. Yeah. But if you've never viewed those kinds of things as protection, if mm-hmm. you've never viewed it as as like a good faith agreement, mm-hmm. if you're never looking at it as good faith agreement, mm-hmm. then you're never going to agree that it's a good thing. It's always going to be this like contentious thing. And I can understand why people who are as traditional and yeah. truly ignorant as yeah. like Teresa and Gia, yeah. like the Gorgas, I, I can see them. I, I that, is such a, that is such a beautiful thing you just described because it, it's another instance where Islam is so much more progressive than some of the other religions yeah. um, you have you recognize divorce there mm-hmm. is actual process for it just mm-hmm. like there is a process marriages and you make contingency plans in case of divorce yeah whereas in christianity divorce is a bad thing and to be avoided in catholicism let's not even talk about it mm-hmm. and in hinduism there's no there's not even a concept of divorce <laughs> There's marriage, death, rebirth, same thing over all over again. <laughs> but there's no concept of you escaping <laughs> your destiny. Oh man. There's no recourse. You might as well just stop thinking about your life because what's gonna happen is gonna happen in our religion. Yeah. So there's not even a there's not even a word for divorce in the Hindu scripture. Yeah. You wanna know another thing that's very progressive about Islam, most people don't know? We yeah. also abortion is allowed. Yeah. So look at that. Only oh, wow. Okay. I don't know about Judaism, but it's I feel like it's the only Abrahamic religion that says, yeah. you know what? Handle your business. You're fine. <laughs> Is it because is it because mostly because they were trying to figure out the sex of the baby? <laughs> oh God. What? Wait, what? I know in India they don't let us find the sex of the baby because they don't want people would find oh. out the sex of the baby and it's called uh, female infanticide oh. because they would no, no, dark, they would no. abort a female baby because they didn't no, want no. so but no. that would require you to know how to figure out what the sex of the baby is. no 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 none of that there's no 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 female. don't you loop your stuff into my stuff okay no we just uh no it's just allowed it's allowed within like a certain time period but i don't think when... the hindus necessarily have that I, I haven't read it in actual scriptures but i think more of the Hindu fundamentalists in India have taken the anti-abortion stance Yeah, now in yeah. more modern days. It's not something that was considered a hot topic until more recently now that the Hindu fundamentalists are aligning themselves with fundamentalists all around the world. Yeah, exactly. Mm-hmm. Alright, yeah. well that took a turn. Anyway, let's talk about OC. <laughs> It was a hard turn to OC. Yeah, hard turn to OC. Speaking of abortion. (laughs) Yeah, weird. This is literally not related at all. Okay, would you rather go to a sweat lodge or would you rather be luxuriating and looking at fancy houses? Oh, luxuriating and looking at fancy houses for sure. Yeah. But I do want to try a sweat lodge once. Not me. I'm sweaty enough as it is. I can tolerate a lot of heat because I grew up 
in South India with in the in the very high heat, I actually enjoy humid weather. So I think I would be okay with it. But I want to experience that, you know, all of your thoughts coming through at once and just crying your eyes out. I want to I know don't what know, that a sweat like. Does that where... really happen or is it like hallucinations because you've had the random some random tea that they gave you? Yeah. Is it mushrooms in the tea? I don't what know, but happening? the sweat lodge where you're sweating a lot and all your emotions are coming out and you're not able to like think straight sounds a lot like menopause to me. <laughs> it is. <laughs> I was like, you it like- is. I go through it. You're right. I do go through it every night. <laughs> It's like, it'll start. It's like it's turn. Yeah, it's about in about twenty minutes. I'm going to be like stripping away out there. <laughs> I was I'd be like, ah, oh, I'm getting hot. Just talking about the sweat lodge, I had to just take off my cardigan. I got so sweaty. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so sweaty as it is. Like I don't need it. My version of a sweat lodge is like wearing a North Face jacket and then going into the subway in like November in New York. Like it gets <laughs> so hot. It suddenly is like super hot. You don't know. You can't think know. straight. I know. So there's like do I I felt like there were like special vents on the subway too that were like blowing hot air. Yes. And almost every time I was traveling, I ended up next to that vent. <laughs> and I was like, how how do you know where it is? <laughs> is it following me? <laughs> I don't. I feel like if Emily had her purse sandwich, Noella wouldn't have passed out. Oh, oh my <laughs> god. That is true. Yeah. Oh, Noella needed some carbs. After yeah, all she the did. Drinking. She did. I don't hate watching Heather build her fancy house. Like people oh. get really annoyed watching it, but I'm like, this is what she's always done. Yeah, she's always done this. When people watch The Housewives, there are two. They fall into two categories: one that one the housewives to be poor and silly, and then another that wants the housewife to be super rich so they can be aspirational. So this is an aspirational housewife. She's spending a ton of money. She's truly, truly wealthy. She's not fake wealthy like mm-hmm. a lot of the other housewives. So she's going to go and spend the money. And I actually enjoyed watching her. I mean, I would enjoy going and visiting all those model homes. Yeah. Um, yeah. I'm like, what's wrong with dreaming and pretending you are for that few seconds in owning those homes? <laughs> Yeah, exactly. I have like just no... because you cannot build one doesn't mean you shouldn't visit one. Yeah, people like really hate Heather for being rich, and I don't understand why they're watching Housewives. Yeah, that's the point of the show. Yeah, that was the point of the show when it first started. Like, what are you doing watching Beverly Hills then? Yeah, that's literally all they talk about in Beverly Hills is how much money they have. Yeah. So why do they like to watch Lisa Vanderpump's house? And how luxurious it is. Yeah. But they don't like Heather's house. I don't Or get Heather it. building another house. <laughs> I don't get it. 15 million. That's all. It's pittance. Yeah. Terry, Terry made that in one afternoon. Yeah. That's like <laughs> three Nicole He's James He's apparently boot the, jobs. one of the top richest doctors in the world right now. What? He was like, yeah, I saw some lists somewhere floating around. The top 20 doctors, rich doctors in the world. And Terry Probably because he's wasn't. selling COVID tests for $180. I know. <laughs> I know. Terry. I know. Now, if you want to be mad at them for anything, be mad at them for, you know, price yes. gouging COVID tests. But right. But building a house, whatever. Yeah. And having like, you know, cool uh, drawers that drop down from the ceiling with their toothpaste and toothbrush in their bathroom. We didn't even talk about that. We haven't. We should hate them for that. I don't hate them for it. No, I hate them for it. There should be nothing mechanized that shows up like that. And just, you know, it's like one of those futuristic cartoons. Like everything comes through the wall. and sh- Like the what? Jetsons. Yeah, like the Jetsons. Like what? You Suddenly <laughs> the tap, you're going to open a tap or press a button and you're going to get a fresh breakfast and coffee. I mean, that sounds great. The- <laughs> I know. But no. How dare they? How dare they have a Jetsons bathroom when we don't have flying cars yet? <laughs> You're right. And by the way, what do you do when that like when something breaks like, down? Exactly. Do not mechanical brush your teeth. stuff breaks down. What What do you do when suddenly that shelf would not the mirrors are not moving and the shelf doesn't come down and you don't have toothbrush? Yeah, then you got to call a guy from Samsung to come and fix your bathroom drawer. Imagine. And they give, and they give you a window of like one to four <laughs> and don't show up. <laughs> so Heather Dubrow has to sit in a mansion waiting for... <laughs> 
<laughs> this, is, this episode is going to be so long. <laughs> We've been recording for like an hour. We have two more shows to talk about. We're talking about a mechanical Geronimo scene that wasn't even on this. Episode. I just remembered it all of a sudden that I realized I had such strong feelings about it when it happened and I never got to talk about it. No, and this is important. <laughs> this is very important and I agree. <laughs> oh God. So that no. you can be mad at, but her buying land. No. investing making money can make more money okay so yeah. if she puts in 15 million she's gonna sell it for 18 she's gonna that's how she's gonna make the next million yeah so do you, do you think that what people with money do what do you think do you think that the rest of the ladies are scared of heather as noella says i don't know if they're scared of her i don't mm-hmm. think so I think they are, they're kissing her ass because they understand that she's going to bring that franchise back. They also understand that somebody has to have the wealth to show off on this show. Yeah, it's not None you, of them lady. are rich right now. Yeah. Do you realize that? Because Shannon was supposed to be one of the rich ones and now she's living in a cozy house, as she put it. <laughs> she likes it cozy now. So she went from, she's in a, co- she's in a cozy house, Gina's in a casita. Emily has money. Emily has money, but again, Emily can do everything right. But then it's like, okay, what about Shane and his easy A? He got an easy A and passed the bar. So So like Shane is a paralegal. How much money could he be even making? Exactly. I think they have like uh, Persian Shah money. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's possible. They yeah. probably have like multiple franchises and businesses that his dad owns and things mm, of that sort. That's true. But yeah. still, Noella, you're not the rich one, clearly. So we got to yeah. have a rich one. And also, I don't know if they're scared of Heather as much as they're just being respectful of the person who invited them on this trip. Right. I didn't think they were scared at all. But Noella wants something, right? She was yeah. trying to make a story of one thing. And then she got two things to bite into by the end of the episode. She was like, oh, Heather is so holier than thou. She doesn't talk to me. She doesn't. She ignores me. She's fake. And then she got two things that she could use to prove. Yes, of course she's fake. One, this is a pity invite. Mm-hmm. And two, she called it pornography. <laughs> Okay, so about the pity invite, Noella's like, I thought that Heather invited me because this was an olive branch. But how could it have been an olive branch? You went to her house and said that she was slamming people against walls. And then you even came on the trip. You got there late. And the whole time when the ladies are like out to dinner and she's Mm -hmm. late, she's trashing the trip. She's like, oh, there's no one here to receive me. And I'm here all by myself. So why did you think it was an olive branch when you got there with a nasty attitude to begin with? And Yeah. And then you sat at, you came to the table and you complained about almost everything. Yeah. the, The tequila was too warm. The glass, the water wasn't cold enough. It was like everything was an issue for her. Yeah. Then at this dinner, I will say one thing that Noella said that I wish that they showed more. Noella said her outfit that she was wearing, she said, surprise, surprise, another black designer. Mm -hmm. I wish that they actually showed what designer it was. Like, I wish I I know that I saw I don't know the name of the designer and I forgot. Remember last year there was this like photo shoot that the Houses of Potomac did with a black designer. His name starts with a T. I don't remember the name. She was holding one of his bags. The red bag that she was wearing to dinner, it had that T logo, Mm. so it was him. And then I know that Bones has done an outfit for her. So I wish that they did show that because she did mention it. So like that's one thing about Noella that I will give her credit for trying to bring more on the show and obviously doing it intentionally and trying to give attention to it but she does everything intentionally and that's where she loses us like, she was- there's nothing authentic that nothing organic that comes yes. out everything becomes intentional yes her. that's true that's true that's very true so at the dinner yeah there's this like it's like a weird shift So Noella and Shannon and Gina have a weird interaction because Emily tells she's such a shitster. Emily is such a shitster, but she admits that she's a shitster. Emily tells Noella that Gina asked Heather to invite Noella to the trip because Gina was trying to be a good friend. But that blows up because Noella then gets mad at Gina 
for not telling her that she did that and making her think that Heather liked her. Then Noella brings this up at dinner to Shannon and Shannon is like, wait, wait, what's going on? And, you know, Shannon is like half drunk and very Mm -hmm. confused. In that Shannon interaction, Shannon says, what, we were a pity invite? (laughs) Shannon uses the word we. And I was like, no, Noella was talking about her, not you. Now, all of a sudden, Shannon <laughs> is connecting the two and saying that both of them were pity. Oh, like. God, Shannon. And I was uh, like, did Noella say we? I don't understand. Did Noella try to pre- tell Shannon that she was a pity invite too? Or Shannon just assumed that? Shannon is just a mess. And then... <laughs> Sombrero mess. She's fun, Shannon. Okay, she's fun, Shannon, but she's got to do her hair. Yeah. She's she got does. her hair in this weird, like, dowdy mm. bun. Yeah. I'm like, what do you mean? She's such she's such an old lady. She's so me sometimes. She's wearing spanx. It doesn't quite push her tummy in. She's wearing a dress that's too tight. She's sitting down, she's getting up and the spanx moves and she's just <laughs> struggling. I can see her boobs are like choking her because they're so pushed up and she's so uncomfortable. And I have to say, I have been in that position. <laughs> I have dressed like that and I have been that miserable. So I feel it, almost feel it. I almost feel myself being in Shannon's place uh-huh. and just uncomfortable throughout. Just She's an uncomfortable. She is the epitome of uncomfortable. Yeah. She From needs to stop to wearing out. spangs and just let everything loose. Just be yourself, Shannon. Be comfortable in like comfy clothes. I don't want you struggling. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> So then Noella starts to go in on Heather and says, why did you basically give me a pity invite? That's when Heather says the thing about you gave my daughter pornography. Now, I will say it was not pornography. Was it inappropriate? Yes. Noella, all she had to do was say, I didn't know that. But then she has all these cards that she's like willing to drop, right, about being biracial and straight fragility and all this stuff. And even Heather is like, that's not what we're trying to do here. Like, all I'm trying to say is that this was an inappropriate gift. I was actually surprised by how Heather handled it. She didn't yell. Didn't she didn't scream. She's like, ah, she never does. And she pulled up her phone and she started reading out the words. And she's like, "Okay, what are you going to say now? Yeah. I'm yeah. just reading out what's on the cards. And yes. even then, it takes Noella so long to say sorry. Yeah. But she still doesn't, ad- she still wants to keep pulling on the pornography work. Yeah, it's weird because she wants to fight this thing. She's like, what are you talking about? What are you talking about? I didn't do that. And then once Heather reads it, she's like, oh, oh, yeah, that's bad. I didn't know. Okay, I'm sorry. And then Heather's like, yeah, so this is all I was trying to say to you was that it was inappropriate. And it's like once Noella has said she's sorry, she wants to be done and she just keeps going, are we done? Are we done? Is this over? Are we done? Like she's so annoying and she's so immature. But I read this thing online. Mm -hmm. There's an Instagram account called Queer Bravo Analysis. She's very funny. Mm -hmm. And she did point out something, which I think is something to note, that queer people in the past, there's a history, right, of queer people being labeled or or being presented as predators, as these so Mm -hmm. overly sexual beings that, Mm -hmm. you know, fetishize a lot of people. And there's this like horrible Mm -hmm. stigma that existed and probably still does in some circles mm-hmm. for years and years and years about mm-hmm. gay people. Mm-hmm. And so this idea that a gay woman or a, a bisexual woman would <clears throat> gift a child something inappropriate seems predatory to some degree, mm-hmm. right? It yeah. seems very predatory. Okay. And so there is this idea that mm-hmm. for a queer person to be accused of doing something predatory to a child right. would have them react in this way. Now, is that possible? Yes. However, Noella, I don't think, has the depth or understanding yeah. or self-control or nuance True. to be yeah. able to parse that out in her yeah. mind. She's yeah. a disaster of a human. Yeah. And yeah. she's very. it's very much 100%. She's come onto the show with this sort of intention, as you said, of bringing mm-hmm. up all these things right. and talking about them a certain way. And it's like, this isn't it. Like, she already has this idea in her mind that she is, you know, she, it is true. Yeah, she is biracial and she is liberal and she does exist in OC, which is a very conservative area. Those mm-hmm. things are all true. But I think she thinks like, this is my character and I'm going to be unique on this show because mm-hmm. I am these things. And it's like, yeah. it's not natural. It's not authentic. It's, yeah. it's not a personality type. Yeah. 
it's not and it, it, it totally missed the point of the conversation yeah the point of the conversation was really why did heather feel uncomfortable inviting her yes and that is completely lost by the end of that whole conversation, the, you're not even talking about the pity invite anymore. Yes, you're right. Yep. And Heather tries to explain to her and Heather is Heather is trying to say that, look, this is how I felt. I felt uncomfortable and that's why I wasn't going to invite you. But I don't think you did it intentionally. She even says that. I don't think you did that intentionally. Yeah. I just feel uncomfortable. Yeah. Right? I don't believe you did that intentionally is what she says. And that's why she then allowed her to come but it, that's that's also not completely true the reason heather and everybody else feels uncomfortable with nola is not that card that she gave max it's her personality and how she deals with things yeah heather is not being truthful about it and gina is not being truthful about it. everybody thinks of noella as a liability they, yeah. be, they don't know what they're going to get and how she's going to react and what she's going to say. She's so, she's just so unpredictable that they are, that's what makes people nervous around her. Also, I think Gina tried to tell her that, but yeah. Gina gets too drunk and then can't. Yeah. Don't change anybody. Like, it doesn't matter. Ignore everything we said. Just stay the way you are. <laughs> it's actually good. Yeah. TV never change. Watch. Never change. Yeah. Speaking never of change. getting really drunk in Real Housewives of Miami, Julia got super duper sick. So she she did what Noella did without the um, sweat lodge. She was able to accomplish the same. <laughs> and it could have been menopause because I feel like she's of that age. Yes, it could be that too. Oh my God, Julia, estrogen. Thank God Nicole was there to handle the situation. Yeah, uh, not according to Alexia and Marisol. Marisol called her Doogie Hauser. I know. That's so fucked up. I hate Marisol. She's the worst because she's not even like clever. She's not funny. She like mm. just has watched a couple of seasons of Drag Race and thinks that she's being like cute. Yeah, and it's, she's calling she's, everybody hooker. Yeah. She's the one actually calling everybody hookers and fuckers and yeah. all this stuff. And then she's like pinning it on other people. A really funny thing that happened in that whole s yeah. situation where Julia's super sick and she's throwing up. First, Nicole's looking for a trash can. She takes a salad bowl, which really grosses Marisol out. But I'm like, but it's actually a really good idea because it's going to go down the sink. It'll get cleaned up and then it'll go in the dishwasher and it gets disinfected. That's yeah. what are you going to do with the plastic trash can? I know. So I know. all that is happening. There's all this panic. And then Alexia's like, you know, <laughs> we should call 911. I call 911 for everything. For everything. They know me. <laughs> Like your DoorDash? What are you talking <laughs> about? You don't call nine one one for everything. It's just also I understand that maybe with Frankie being yeah, maybe they call nine one one more often than they should. Other people would yeah, but at the same time, you don't call nine one one for everything. It's so that funny. Is, that is wrong, Alexia. <laughs> And then also it's interesting to see all of the different reactions to what's going yeah. on. Like Nicole is like, let me check like your vitals, see how you're feeling, yeah. whatever. Adriana's freaking out. She's just calling as many people as she can. She's like, take a Xanax, like take something. Then you have Lisa who's like, I'm not even going to go in that room because you know what? If I was sick, I wouldn't want to be bothered. <laughs> Larsa only cares about herself. She's like, Oh my God, it's the Larsa Marie event. It's the Larsa Marie event. My Larsa Marie she, event. Larsa also cares about her image as the perfect mom. So she keeps trying to put down Adriana. Adriana doesn't even know what to do with a sick person. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, for some reason she goes off. This was the episode where Larsa kept going against everything Adriana did yeah. bothered Larsa, right? This trip is where it started. Yes. But she mentions it in this one-off sentences. So people don't even know that Larsa is like has a slow, slow brewing animosity against yeah. Adriana nobody even realizes because Lars is so dumb she doesn't even express herself right <laughs> so it's like it's simmering and she brings it up every once in a while <laughs> but it just gets completely lost in the conversation and then they're also like Adriana's clearly never taken care of anybody not a dog not a pet not any I'm like she has a grown this son I know what are you guys talking about <laughs> I think they forget that Adriana is a mom and she yeah. has a son. It's so crazy. They have this event and Julia sleeps through the whole thing. 
And at the event, it goes fine. But then Adriana and Larsa get into a fight about sitting in the shade. <laughs> Let me be in the shade. I want the shade. I want the shade. I was like, it would mean so completely different on Potomac. I know. <laughs> and, on, and on Atlanta to be asking for shade. Adriana announces to everybody about a hundred times that she's been up since four in the morning because Julia had diarrhea. I'm like, poor Julia. Okay. She's like, you know Julia that I was up at four in the morning dealing with vomiting and diarrhea. She was vomiting and there was diarrhea. I'm like, what were like, you doing? Right. When Vicky got sick in Iceland, <laughs> it was a short scene followed by Vicky being covered in a blanket and wheeled up. Yeah. Like Michael Jackson. <laughs> Yeah, like Michael Jackson. Here, it was like the camera was in Julia's face (laughs) as she's throwing up. (laughs) And they were so in her face. I felt bad for Julia. I was like, there's too much. I mean, every one of us, maybe not you, but I have certainly been in a situation where I've had too much. And the next morning, I'm completely dehydrated and throwing up. And I have a story about that, too, because once, once it happened with my friends from college but it wasn't the alcohol that had me throwing up Mm. I ate I had just lost a lot of weight and I looked slim because I was meeting my friends from college I was very happy about the fact I met with them and we all went to New York City and we walking around somewhere around Times Square which is again another flag (laughs) but went for lunch and they all picked like pizza and some hot pasta and all of that and I was like no I have lost all this weight. I'm not going to eat pizza and pasta and destroy all of the work I have done. And I ate a salad. Oh. And then I proceeded for the rest of the evening to get progressively worse throwing up. Everybody thought, oh, you're drunk. You're drunk. You're having all of this. Oh, you're having all of this reaction because you got, you are drinking. And it wasn't that. It was, it was the damn salad and the salmonella there. <laughs> So having been in that position and being the one that is the party pooper and everybody is fussing around you, I totally identified with Julia in that situation. I was like, if that cameraman had been in my face, that would have been murder. Yeah. Julia ate an entire jar of pickles. I know. You know, pickles sitting in a pickle jar with like juices. Even a Russian cannot take that, Julia. Yeah, but she was like, might be a strong Russian, but this didn't work. Also, you're like putting your hands inside of the wet pickles, which just feels dirty. Brian, it's salt water. Basically, if you take, if you drink a lot of salt water, you're going to throw up. That's what happens. Yeah. So I think that's what happened to her. Yeah. What do you think about the editor shading Larsa with her Harper's Bazaar cover? What was the shade? I didn't get it. She said, I made it to Harper's Bazaar, bitches. And then they zoomed in and it was actually Harper's Bazaar, Vietnam. (gasps) I did not notice that. (gasps) I have to see that. I was like, where was she on Harper's Bazaar? I was like, what's wrong with Harper's Bazaar? How how low have they fallen? They have it. Oh, it's Vietnam. It's Vietnam, and apparently it's like re- it's like uh it's like um um uh, Sonia Morgan being famous in Puerto Rico or something. Yeah, like she's always on Latina magazine, and I never yeah. understand it. <laughs> what are you doing on Latina magazine? It's like the yeah. whitest lady in the world. Yeah, Harper's yeah. Bazaar Vietnam, where apparently you can. The rumor is you can actually pay them to be on the cover. Oh my god, <laughs> I didn't oh, even notice that. Oh my god, I didn't notice. Oh. Oh. And what do you think of most of her jewelry and stuff was like through partners. She's like my partners, my partners and the jewelry. So this is just her lending her name. Yep. But also she didn't even bother to put things together until like two minutes before those influencers arrived. She didn't even put it together. Gertie it was, did. Yeah. Gertie had to gertie it. Gertie and Sophie had to do it. Yeah. Oh, oh my, my gosh. gosh. It's terrible. Um, it was fine. I mean, I feel like that's the game nowadays, right? That's the move is if you get a social media following that is big enough, jewelers or people will reach out yeah. to you and do partnerships with you yeah. so yeah. that you can, you know, basically get right. money off of that. That's, that's what happens in all yeah. these situations. What did you think about this conversation that Nicole and Marisol had where Nicole tries to clear the air with Marisol and Marisol says, I don't care? Yeah, I uh- I feel I like know Nicole, Nicole knows Marisol's tra- number. Like she knows yeah. exactly what Marisol is doing. She can, it's very transparent. Yeah, and I'm glad Nicole said, I'm going to put this on camera. So it's on record that I yeah. tried and I talked. 
Yeah. And so I think they both got what they wanted from it. They wanted to say their piece. They got to say their piece. And then they walked away. They're never going to be friends. Marisol was still bad-mouthing Nicole on Watch What Happens Live. Yeah, she was. And Alexia and Lisa were too. Apparently, Alexia and Lisa were mad that Nicole got engaged and they found out through People Magazine and they didn't find out from her. <laughs> okay. Whatever. Whatever. Lisa has a birthday dinner and everybody's talking about fantasies and hall passes and all this stuff. And Nicole says that her hall pass is John Mayer and they make fun of her about it. Like, it's just straight up mean girl stuff. Like, yeah, it's so it's annoying. Like anything she says, they make fun of her. Yeah. Anything she says. Anything. I she mean, says. Lisa said it was it was Lenny. That should have been made fun of. Yes. Nobody made fun of that at the table. <laughs> Everybody's making fun of John Mayer, who, by the way, is not a great person to have a whole yeah. pass with. Okay, yeah. let's just yeah. say it. Okay, Nicole, you yeah. would have to singe off your entire reproductive system and get yeah. a brand new one. Yeah. Because God knows where John He's wrong going. for other reasons. You can make fun of it for yes. other reasons. <laughs> yes, exactly. But um, not just all- because she picked him. Yes, exactly. And then Alexia was like, she just kept making jokes about, she said something about not being a liar. And yeah, I was she like, was like, I don't lie about these things, but some people want to, and they, some people think they have to, and they do. And I can, like, I know when they're lying. I'm not going to bring it up. I'm like, yeah, but well, it's you like, just called her a liar. Yeah, but Alexia, you spent three seasons on this show lying about your marriage. Yeah. So, no, I think you are a liar. <laughs> no, they're just being mean girl and picking on um, Nicole, they decided they don't want Nicole anymore. So they are going to pick on her. No matter what she says, they're going to put her down. And because they can sense that Julia is sort of supporting Nicole and thinks that these girls are bullying her, now they're like, they're doing the same thing with Julia. Yeah. They're going to start picking on Julia for this. Why does Adriana look so greasy all the time? I think she's doing some kind of like, let's put some luminous, you know, lotion, look younger. But it all it does is it has this gold, yellow gold reflection from the production lights or whatever. And she just looks hideous all the time. She looks like she's in like a jaundice sweat. Yes. She's, and she's wearing a-, a lot of gold and yellow. And mm-hmm. it's sort of those clothes also, the choice of the color also, uh, you know, in combination with whatever she's putting on her face is sort of making her look extra yellow. In yeah, all it's scenes. all a big disaster. Yeah. What did you think about the Project Runway finale? I thought that this runway was probably one of the most funnest runway. I actually loved all four designers for the most part. Yes. Um, It was just a question of who did I love more, but I didn't hate anybody. Yeah, we were going Even in. Christina. First of all, Christina, her theme and the, the flowers she drew yeah. and the fabric she designed, it actually looked beautiful. Yeah. When she did the runway, the progression of the clothes, did you see how one would hand off to the other? And it was progressively, it was the right progression of clothes. Yeah. So it felt very much like a professional runway situation there. Yeah. Except except for the very final hoverboard, which was, uh, I don't know. I loved it. I was trying too hard, but I I didn't quite get it with the rest of it. I do like that Christina does these things where if there's something quirky about her that she thinks is lovable and adorable, then Mm -hmm. she's going to incorporate it into her design. And while I think that that's like a little weird, I think there's something really sweet and authentic about it. Like the fact that she had celery Uh (laughs) and a print. All yeah. season, she would make celery juice for all of the people in the yeah. house every yeah. morning. They would start yeah. all their shows, all their episodes with them eat, having celery juice. So I actually right. thought it was really sweet. Yeah. And I was surprised also because we were going in thinking Christina was the worst one, but I, yeah. her shit looked expensive. It did because of the fabric and the patterns, the colors. They were so I pretty. I didn't understand what Tommy Hilfiger was saying that, Oh, patterns come and go, prints come and go, solids you can sell over and over again. I think prints sell too. I think prints also. I don't know what stay. he's talking about. I don't about. know what he's talking about. I don't know what if, he's talking about. If like anything, maybe material of a clothing material or a style of clothing can come and go. But prints can be pretty, lo- you, you know, talk to Vera Bradley or whoever makes a lo- ton of prints. That's what she's banking the whole. Yeah, even Tori Birch. On. Tori Birch has yeah, prints. Tori Birch too. My favorite collection was corals. It was. 
it was I was my, blown and, away. And Chantal was my least favorite. Honestly, was Chastity was my least favorite. Chastity almost came to it. But I did not like Chantal, especially the gray suit that everybody kept going off on. I th- wonder if it's like if we saw it in person, we would get it because you could tell that she did this thing with the ro- like with the ropes. So you could tell there was some sort of inc- intricate design that went. But from where I was looking from home, it yeah. looked like an like a unironed linen like yeah, like it looked and creased. It looked like the roping. It wasn't flat. beautifully flat and in sync with the clothing. It almost felt like bulky in spots and pulled in little spots. It looked like a home ec, you know, craft example of something kind of stitching. I did not quite appreciate it. I didn't like Chastity's either. You're right. Actually, Chastity's was a little worse because there were some other pieces in, in Chantal's presentation that were good. I liked the one that everybody liked, which was the black gown with, with the, the coat, beautiful yeah. coat. That was beautiful. But there were also others where it was more of the print and not so much braiding that she had done herself yeah it i was like actually incorporated as a print i loved all of that so mm-hmm. yeah i liked right. her red jumpsuit that she had yes that was that really was good. cool yeah that was good chastity's uh, out of her whole collection my favorite one was the purple pant and yeah. crop top and again yeah. the clothes that she wears herself like the outfit that she had on had yeah. that element of the little bit of the sparkle and some of the ruffle it's right. like she takes whatever the big design is that she puts out on the runway she tones it down and puts it on her own body and i almost yeah. wish that somebody would say and nina did try to say it yeah, like nina in the last episode to. and i have been saying it from the beginning by yeah. the way nina yeah nina, i was there before <laughs> Nina just took my line. Okay, yeah, just do did. what you wear. Yeah, she has these really, really cute clothes, and she she dresses her body really well. I do agree with Tommy Hilfiger because she is gonna be. She could be a designer that makes mm-hmm. pop stars look amazing. She could be like a designer for, for their pop performance stars. for their tours, either for performances performance. or like big award shows, MTV yeah. Music Awards. Because right. even if you think about Christian Siriano, Christian Siriano yeah. is famous now for dressing actresses red on red carpets. Yeah, and I think that Chastity has that chance. I think yeah. where she should start first is dressing housewives for reunions. <laughs> I know. Because she makes very reunion outfits. She does. She does. Yeah. It didn't feel futuristic or innovative or anything of that. It felt fun and great and nice, but Chastity's didn't feel like something brand new and beautiful that we could have seen. Coral. Coral was amazing. It was amazing. Coral. I was crying when I was watching her. It was just her son. I was I also like love an underdog. I love a quiet person who comes out on top. The right. fact that she's never won a challenge and her being mm-hmm. in the finale and being able to put out this incredible yeah. thing. I, I didn't like that Tommy Hilfiger was like, oh, you had some things that were tailored and other things that were macrame. It's like, yeah, but she even the look. tailored stuff had tassels and macrame on it. So yeah. even the macrame stuff had a tailored bodice or something on it. Right. So And she does both great. Yes, she does those both in yeah. impeccably. Embroidery, that oh. Mexican embroidery, it was just so true to... That jacket? On oh. the jacket you made? Oh, oh the God. jacket was just... I wanted the jacket. I wanted a version of the jacket for myself. Yes. It was so beautiful. The macrame was so intricate. And she didn't do a regular macrame either. Mm -mm. She did it with like so many different kinds of threads. The one in the black that went up her neck, that was so beautiful. Yes. That was beautiful. Then she also did uh, all of her clothing. She gave a variety of like streetwear to different things, gowns and you know, um, something that was more of an avant-garde, you know, statement piece. But she also, her clothing felt new and it felt like each piece that came out felt like that in itself could be expanded into a whole line of things. Yeah. And I didn't feel the same from Chantal. Chantal's felt like that was it. All of that. That's it. So it was interesting that Tommy Hilfiger was the final judge. I wonder if it would have been different if Elaine was on. Mm -hmm. But... He kept drilling in on this should be marketable and we should be able to make money off of it, right? Yeah. So I kind of got that because I guess that's part of it. 
is that you want to bring it I felt like somebody and... told him, like, this is what you bring to the show. Yeah. Somebody, like, an intern behind was saying, well, this is what they focus on. This is what Brandon will talk about. This is what Nina will talk about. And this is what you can focus on, Tommy. The, you know how people tell you, well, these are the things that we think you would be great at, right? Yeah. And, and I wish... said, said mm-hmm. marketability. And then that was it. All he could talk about was that. And I wish that Christian was brought in at the end as one of the judges. I think that would have been really nice to see Christian's perspective. I know. I understand why Chantal won, though, because even though I didn't love it, it did look expensive on the runway. And it did Mm -hmm. look like stuff that somebody like a Lena Garcia would wear. And that's essentially the market that they look Mm -hmm. at. They're not looking at any other market except for like Nina. Yeah, they don't don't care about like two seasons later, it comes down in some kind of form, way, shape, shape or form to Old Navy for us to buy. It's not going to, but yeah. (laughs) Pretty much. Yeah. This is a big episode, an hour and a half almost we recorded. I know, but we had four shows to cover. We did pretty good. Plus plus all of my issues with Terry Ann, Heather's bathroom. <laughs> so, yeah. I'm glad you got that off your chest before you oh, take a break I know, for a while. that would have bothered me a lot. There's another conspiracy theory that I've been sitting on that I have to say it, so I'm going to say it now because I, I won't be recording next week. Mm-hmm. You kept saying, oh, Shed Media is sh- is doing all the work for, it's a New York company, they do mm-hmm. Roni, and now they do Salt Lake City. And I remember that Shed Media came in like midway last season, Mm -hmm. the first season. Mm -hmm. And I just had this conspiracy theory while I was on the treadmill today that (laughs) maybe Bravo knew about the Jen Shah shit. And they brought in a New York company. So New York and YPD would have jurisdiction on footage and stuff like that. Oh, my God. I mean, no, that's a deep conspiracy. That's theory. a deep, that's like a QAnon level because yeah. also it would, they wouldn't need shed media because she already had an operation happening in New York. So yeah. technically they wouldn't really need. Yeah, I know. I know. But, but it's a good one for people <laughs> who don't listen to Bravo docket. They mm-hmm. would be like, yeah, that's totally what they did. Yeah, I know. And meanwhile, you know, Ceci and Angela are like, no, that yeah, doesn't, Ceci, that's not how it works, you Ceci dumb Ceci and Angela are like, shut up, stupid. Shut up, that's stupid. Not how that that's works. not how any of this works. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what I'm going to do without you for the oh, next seven What am I going to do without Bravo and you? I don't like that you said Bravo first. <laughs> <laughs> At least you have Bravo. I don't even know if I can watch it there. Somebody on her Patreon shared an entire um, instruction, allegedly. I know. They, I know. They I'm kept trying to figure allegedly. out what half of those words mean. I have to figure that out first. <laughs> and then, you know, it, it meant a lot. It felt like very computer science-y, like people who code and shit would understand those words. Yeah, possibly. Yeah. Yeah. It was a hacker like. <laughs> I need Mr. Robot. Mr. Robot? Is that show even on TV? I think it's... I don't know. I think it must be done now. Yeah. Rami Malek played Freddie Mercury. And then they were like, okay, we don't need you on FX anymore. I I tried to watch it because I loved the first two episodes, first two seasons. And then I was trying to watch it and understand, but it just took a bizarre turn. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, that's another show we talked about that wasn't even on Bravo this week. (laughs) (laughs) Well, Arthi, I'm going to miss you while you're gone. And usually I say, okay, well, we will talk to you on Wednesday. Hey, if I test positive, I'm going to (laughs) make the flight. (laughs) I'm getting tested tomorrow in the morning. If I test positive, I don't make the flight in the evening. All right. Well, worst things have happened. (laughs) Worst things have happened. Okay, guys. Well, I will talk to you guys on Wednesday. Yay. Okay, RT, bye. Bye. Bye.
reality is is now on Patreon, and here are some of our fabulous supporters. Jesse Willis. I may not run in traffic, but I'll give you a run for your money. Rody. When you work in quality assurance, perfection comes easy. Tori Tuchilo. When Tori steps on the scene, you are his story. Eugene Henderson. In the game of life, I choose Jeopardy. Maria M. Where I come from, they sing God Save the Queen. The truth is, it's actually me. Becca Simon. If you can't stand the heat, come to Minnesota. Jill Hirsch. Your petty drama can't take this warrior down. Jamie Allrunner. Some people call me cold, but it's not me. It's that Minnesota weather. Sarah Gibbs. You may not like the cut of my jet, but that's what you get from Sarah Gibbs. Richie D. If you can't be cool, you can't be with Caduce. Megan Shaw. I may be a model, but I'll never be your model minority. Samaj Bledson. The fun bus is here, and I'm driving on the turnpike. Eleanor Manning. I run with a fabulous circle of people, and they're not even on my payroll. Danny McLaughlin. First, I came out, and now I'm coming for everything. Kelly Paper. I may be from down under, but don't ever underestimate me. Seiran Hayati. In Sweden, we have ABBA, IKEA, and if you mess with me, some other four-letter words. Jessica Riley. Where I come from, money can buy you anything, but I'll take the garbage plate. Chastity Davis. Don't be fooled by my name. The only thing I abstain from is your bullshit. Sarah Watkins Bilstein. Playtime is over. This mom means business. Laura Zielinski. Whether it's breast pumping or fist bumping, this mama brings the party. Jill Walsh. I made it up the hill myself and I'll kick any jack off. And finally, diamonds aren't a girl's best friend. John Friedman is. 